Hello, my friends, and welcome to this video on specular versus Lambertian scattering. Spoiler alert, Donald Trump loses. Ha 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 Okay, so, in the last video, we set up this problem. We have these farm fields in Vermont. We want to know which ones have bare soil and which ones are covered with vegetation. But we see that some of these farm fields are white in a true color rendering. And that's because they're so bright that even a contrast stretch couldn't reveal any tonal resolution in them. So we still don't know whether they're vegetated or whether they have soil. So one thing to think about is why are they reflecting so much light back to the sensor? Why could they be so bright? brighter than the other fields. And to think about this, I want to first tell you a little bit about what controls brightness at a detector or at a sensor. Three different things control that. One is illumination of the scene, right? How bright is the sun? The brighter the sun is, uh, and, and if the sun is the angle of the sun, uh, control how much of that light might make it back to a detector on a plane or a satellite. Okay, so illumination is one. The other is, of course, the reflectance spectra of the surface. And we often call this narrow band reflectance. How many molecular processes in the surface are absorbing photons, right? So think about black asphalt. It has a lot of absorption bands, so it's not very reflective. So we think of that as narrow band reflectance. And the third thing is scattering on the surface. And we haven't talked about this yet. Uh, so scattering, of course, refers to if a, if a photon is not absorbed, in what manner does it actually get bounced off of the surface? Okay, Where do those photons end up that get bounced off or reflected? How are they scattered? And when we think about these, these processes, we call this wideband scattering. Okay, so these are wideband processes that may affect uh, photons across a number of energies or across the bandwidth. That's why we call it a wideband. Affects lots of photons. Okay, so I just said that wideband scattering uh, affects a lot of different wavelengths. And a great example of this is this image here. Look at this. This is all water here, right? This is the ocean. This is uh, the land with some flooding. And these are waves. And so although the waves are also made of water, they're white instead of being this kind of greenish color. Why are they so white? Just like our plowed farm fields. It's because they are excellent scatterers. And they are reflecting more photons back to the satellite sensor than the calm water is. So, and if you think about it, they both may actually be reflecting the same number of photons. It's just that the uh, waves are scattering those photons in more different directions, so more of them are making it back to the detector. And guess what? We have a name for these types of behavior. Um, we can think of two types of reflectors. One is a specular reflector. So that's something that's smooth, which photons tend to come in. They bounce once, ding, and they head off at a very predictable angle. So the result is that most of the photons, if they're not absorbed, are reflected in one direction. Okay. You might picture like a laser beam you know, being reflected off an angled mirror or something. The other category is Lambertian reflector. Lambertian reflectors don't just have one reflection. The photon comes in and it may bounce multiple times, ding, 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 before finally being reflected back up into the atmosphere. So Lambertian reflectors tend to scatter photons in all different directions, right? In a maybe it may, actually in a predictable way quite often, but. Um, in a, maybe in a more homogeneous way. They're spreading those photons around more homogeneously. So what's interesting is that specular surfaces, okay, here, 
may actually reflect more total photons because there's less chances for narrow band absorption, but they can still look dark in the camera because all those photons go off in the same direction. If they miss the camera, well, then the thing looks dark. Okay. In contrast, Lambertian surfaces may end up actually reflecting less, fewer photons, but can actually appear brighter in a camera because there's kind of a guarantee that some of those photons are going to make it back to the camera at some point. And it reflects fewer because fewer overall photons because there's more collisions, ding, 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 ding. And there's a chance for absorption on each of those collisions. So here's an example of that. Um, a photograph of a lake. The lake is fairly calm, OK? And let's say the sun is off here on the right-hand side somewhere. It's coming down from the sky at an angle where the sun hits this part of the lake. The angle is perfect to reflect back to the camera, making the lake appear bright. But however, the sun's angle as it comes over and hits this side of the lake is a bit lower. So that reflection actually comes back and misses the camera. So even though the whole lake is experiencing a specular reflection from the sun, uh, only the sun's photons that hit over here are actually reflected back to the camera. So this is bright, and this is dark. If it was a Lambertian surface, it might all be the same color. So now, back to our farm fields. What I, everything We're trying to understand why some of these fields are so bright and are saturated in our image. So we now have two possibilities. One is, well, maybe they're just more reflective in general. Maybe their narrow band reflection is really good, like they're made of a mirror material or snow. Maybe they're covered in snow. They're not. But. Or maybe the second option is that they're just rougher and they have better Lambertian scattering than some of the other fields. Stay tuned for our next video on band ratios where we're going to answer this question. Thanks.